Reporting verbs are what we use to describe the thoughts, feelings, and speech of other people or ourselves. And for that reason, they're really important in academic and scientific writing when we need to describe uh, the ideas and uh, research you know, conducted by other people. There are a number of different reporting verbs and they all carry slightly different meaning. Um, and the important thing about them is that they all take different complements. They follow different patterns. So it's really important to become familiar with the most common reporting verbs and to understand what can go in the complement position. The distinctive thing about a reporting verb is that basically you've got a clause inside of a clause. You know, there's an action. There, there's something that's happening. Somebody is saying something or thinking something or feeling something. So that's kind of like you know, one level of action. And then above that, there's another clause. And a way that you can put it is to say that that clause is kind of being projected projected through this first clause. You, you have a main clause, you know, I think, I say, something like that. And, and, and then through that clause, there's another clause that's being projected. So a way to imagine it is really to look at this, um, you know, like a comic strip. So why don't you pause this and just take a look at this comic strip for a second. It's a very common, um, you know, situation that you'd find in uh, in grad school. But what's happening here? Well, you have at one level, you know, these grad students who are talking to each other. So that's one clause. You could say the two grad students met another one. The one grad student hit another grad student. One grad student said something, right? That's one level of action. And then above that, there's another clause that's being projected through it. So it's kind of like one clause inside of another, embedded inside of another. The most common complement for all reporting verbs is what we call the finite noun clause. Uh, it's gonna be very familiar, but we're gonna take a look at how these work. So just take a look at this sentence. It says that he suggested that we watch the movie. So what's going on here? You know, when we really look at it, there are kind of two clauses. We see, you know, he suggested this, he suggested something uh, in the complement. And then we have another clause that's being projected through it, which is we watch the movie. So that clause, we watch the movie, that's being projected through the speech of this first clause. So we have an interesting problem here. We have a finite clause, we watch the movie, and we want to put that into the complement position. Now, complements, they're very fixed. They can't take a finite clause. They can really only take nouns or things that are functioning as nouns. Uh, you cannot put, in other words, a finite clause into the complement position. It's like a square peg into a round hole. It doesn't fit. So how do we do that? How do we get that finite clause into the complement position of this main clause? Well, what we can do in English is we attach this word that. Now, what's going on here? In uh, syntax, we call that a subordinator, subordinator. So uh, you can see that is made up of two words, sub and order. So the order in which things come and sub means below, you know, submarine, sub zero, it means going below. So a subordinator is something that knocks it down into a lower level in the order. So right now it's a finite clause and we need to subordinate it into a non-finite clause. So what we can do is attach the subordinator that to this clause. And what that does is it takes the clause and it lets us use it as a noun. It wouldn't work otherwise. If you just say he suggested we watch the movie, well, you know, a native speaker would understand you, but at the level of grammar, it doesn't work because you basically have a run on sentence. He suggested and we watch the movie. Those are two finite clauses put side by side, which doesn't work. So if you want to put a clause into the complement position of that main clause, what you need to do is use a subordinator. And when you do that, you, what you have is a finite noun clause. It's a finite clause, but it's functioning as a noun because of the subordinator that. And once you attach that subordinator, you can use it in the complement position. So that's why we call it a finite noun clause. It's still a finite clause, but because of the subordinator that, you, it functions as a noun. You can put it into the subject position, into the complement position, you, you can use it as anywhere you can use a noun. Your choice of reporting verb is very important um, because your choice is going to reflect your relationship to the idea that you're reporting on. There's a strong difference between saying he suggests 
something or the research, the, the evidence suggests something. And to say that it proves something, it shows something, showing your relationship to that information. So a thing to keep in mind about reporting verbs is that your choice of reporting verb is quite important. So here we have the four most common reporting verbs in academic writing. Why don't you pause here and just take a moment to look at these reporting verbs. So suggest, recommend, claim, and show. Those are gonna be the ones that you wanna become most familiar with. So when you have all these different reporting verbs, you know, it becomes tricky to uh, choose. You know, how do you choose which one to use? Well, there are basically three rules you can follow that'll help you uh, make the right choice in terms of which reporting verb to use. The first one to realize is that when you're using a finite noun clause as the complement, that's gonna produce a longer and more um, grammatically complex sentence because you're taking a finite clause and you're putting it inside of a finite clause and it's kind of like a clause inside of a clause. It's a little bit harder to process than uh, just a noun in the complement position. So you could use the finite noun clause as the complement. You could say, he suggested that we watch the movie, but depending on the situation and uh, the context, you know, you could choose to use a different complement, which would be shorter and less grammatically complex. So in the case of he suggested that we watch the movie, you might say to a slightly different meaning, but you might just say he suggested the movie. That's a lot simpler and it's shorter. Uh, or you, if you really want to emphasize the action of watching, you can use the non-finite ing form to say he suggested watching the movie. Now, these all have slightly different meanings, so it's not always going to work. But just to know you have these options. And if you can, it's going to be simpler for your reader to process if you choose one of these other forms. The second thing to keep in mind is that some reporting verbs uh, require an indirect object. Other ones uh, give you the option of including an indirect object and some do not allow an indirect object. So depending on what information you want to include in your sentence, you can choose a reporting verb which gives you the option of using an indirect object or you know requires one. Uh, that's something to keep in mind. So in the case of uh, remind, you know, remind is something that requires an indirect object. I cannot just remind, uh, you know, that the methods are flawed. Uh, you need to remind, you know, another person. So it requires an indirect object. However, if you don't need to make it a point to say, you know, who he reminded, then you may as well choose a, a different reporting verb, one that doesn't require you to use an indirect object, such as noted. You know, if you don't need to say us, and in fact, in some academic contexts, uh, it would be better to not include the personal pronoun us. In that case, you might want to choose a different reporting verb, one that doesn't uh, require you to use an indirect object. And finally, some choices in reporting verbs allow you to reduce the redundancy. Again, if you're using a reporting verb that requires an indirect object, then it's going to force you to note certain participants, and it might cause you to repeat yourself. As in the case, uh, Watson and Crick claim that that they discovered the structure of DNA. So in the complement position there, we have a finite noun clause, but because it's a finite noun clause, it requires a subject, but that subject is now being repeated twice in the main clause and in the projected clause. We're saying Watson and Crick and they. It's a little bit clumsy. We don't want to repeat it. So instead of using a finite noun clause, why don't we just use one of the other options in the complement? In this case, we can use a to infinitive clause, which doesn't require the subject. So we can say Watson and Crick claim to have discovered the structure of DNA. So here we can test this out. Uh, based on those three principles we just looked at, why don't you choose the most appropriate reporting verb? Okay, so our option here is between claim and show. And what I see is that uh, both can actually take this finite noun clause as a complement. Uh, so how do we choose? Well, the thing that I notice in this clause is that we have this uh, adverb, this auxiliary verb of uncertainty. We're saying that it may have accounted. We're not too sure. So even though both of these uh, at the level of syntax can go with a, um, a finite noun clause, I think at the level of semantics, the more appropriate one for the meaning here is claim. Uh, when you claim something, it can be true, it can be false. Uh, when you show something, it's you're showing that it's true. But when you claim something, it's an idea that other people can agree with or disagree with. So it's probably more 
um, appropriate in this case. Again, based on those principles, take a look at this sentence and choose which one do you think is the most appropriate reporting verb based on this subject and complement. Two, we have a choice between informs and notices. And um, inform is a verb that can take an indirect object. I can inform you of my plans. Um, I actually, it must take an indirect object. I can't just go around informing. I need to inform somebody of something. Whereas the verb notice cannot take an indirect object. Actually, notice um, is a common mistake. Uh, students commonly misuse it to uh, when they want to say notify. So they're trying to say, you know, this report notifies, uh, it informs people, it tells you some information. Um, but the, when they say notice, uh, well, you notice, when you notice something, it means something comes to your attention. So in this case, it's not appropriate as a reporting verb. Uh, the reporting verb we want here is inform. It informs the public uh, about the problem of global warming or that the planet is getting hotter. Inform must take an indirect object. A very common mistake to watch out for is to note that some reporting verbs cannot take a finite noun clause. As we've said, the finite noun clause is the most common complement to go with reporting verbs, you know, um, that plus a finite clause, very, very common. But please take a look at this list. These reporting verbs are unique in that they cannot take a finite noun clause. And if you don't know that, it's a very common source of mistakes. Uh, so we have uh, like oppose, for example, you cannot oppose that we watch the movie doesn't make sense. You can oppose watching the movie, it can take a non finite ing clause, but it cannot take a finite noun clause. So let's test this out. Uh, take a look at the sentence, see if you can spot the error, and how would you fix it? This report discusses that. Okay, so discusses that, we have a finite noun clause as the complement, and discuss is one of those verbs that cannot take a finite noun clause. You cannot discuss a clause, you cannot discuss uh, a complete thought, you discuss a topic. You talk about a topic. So discuss, the complement for the verb, uh, the reporting verb discuss must be a noun. So what we're going to do here is try to take the important information from this clause and repackage it into a noun. So it discusses that this technology has four major applications. Let's use applications at the head of our noun. It discusses the major applications. The major applications of what? Of this technology of this technology. Very good. Here's another one. Take a look at this sentence. It says the organizations continue to oppose that the conservation framework was included. See if you can spot the error and how would you fix it? These organizations continue to oppose that. Aha, so oppose that. Uh, oppose is one of those reporting verbs that cannot take a finite noun clause. You cannot oppose uh, that something. You can oppose a noun. You can oppose a thing. So again, we're going to take this clause and repackage it into a noun phrase. Uh, so let's build it around this verb here. The verb form of include is, uh, you know, include. It was included. So the noun form is inclusion. And if you didn't know that, you can easily find it in any dictionary. The inclusion, the inclusion of what? Of the conservation framework. So we just take the essential information in the clause and move it over into a noun phrase. Um, pick the most important kind of idea in the clause and turn that into the head noun. And then you can put the other places in, in whichever slots of the noun phrase they fit. Another one here, read this sentence, see if you can spot the error, and then decide how you would fix it. The next one is a swab. So you know a swab, uh, when you get like a PCR or corona test or something, they take a Q-tip uh, and they, they swab inside your nose. That's a swab. And so this is about uh, viruses traveling through uh, airports, I guess. It says swabs from air travelers. Uh, the, the swabs support that. Aha. So we have the reporting verb support, and then we have a finite noun clause. Uh, support cannot take a finite noun clause. It must take a noun as the complement. Um, the tricky thing here is that we don't want to take this clause and put it into a noun. Because when you support something, it means you encourage it. Uh, you know, you support your friend if they're doing something difficult. You support a sports team if you like that sports team. So that's what support means. So the swabs 
don't support interhemispheric travel of the virus. You see, the, the swabs aren't supporting. The swabs support an idea. They support a claim. They support a fact. So we need to take this um, clause in the finite noun clause, and we need to put it into uh, inside another noun. So how about instead of uh, instead of repackaging it, you know, into its own noun phrase, we can just say support uh, the claim, the claim that, the claim that, the fact that, something like that. It supports the claim that. Um, there is interhemispheric transfer. The important thing to understand about reporting verbs is that you know you you have a big choice in uh, in which ones you can use, and all the different reporting verbs have different meanings. They describe different uh, relationships that you have to the information that you're reporting on, but they all follow different patterns, and there are basically four groups that they all fit into. So we have a roadmap here that we're going to go through, um, and they all relate to you know the indirect object. So does the reporting verb require an indirect object? Does it even let you use an indirect object? That's the important thing to understand about all the different reporting verbs. So in this case, let's take a look at all the reporting verbs that do not allow an indirect object. You can pause here, take a look at this list, and then we'll look at some examples. So for example, uh, realize is one of those verbs that does not allow an indirect object. So the writer realized that he spelled it wrong. You, again, you cannot say the writer realized us that, he's, that he spelled it wrong. The writer realized the reader that he spelled it wrong. It cannot take an indirect object. Another one here is wonder. You cannot wonder to someone else. You cannot wonder to a, a person. You can only wonder an idea. So the verb wonder, as in researchers wondered whether the new material would have clinical applications, that cannot take an indirect object. Final example would be assume, cannot take an indirect object. It's a common mistake. So this report assumes that readers have background knowledge uh, in the properties of dark matter. You cannot include an indirect object with the verb assume. All the other reporting verbs do allow an indirect object and some even require it. So let's begin by looking at the ones that require an indirect object. You cannot use these verbs tell, convince, inform, persuade, and remind, you cannot use them without an indirect object. Very common mistake here is with inform. You cannot just inform information. You need to inform a person, somebody else. So scientists inform, who do they inform? The public, the, the people who receive this information. We, we label that at the level of semantics. We label that the receiver. Uh, they receive the information that the ozone layer was degrading. You cannot use the verb inform without an indirect object. Similarly, you cannot use the word persuade without an indirect object. You need to persuade somebody else of the idea. So the postdoc, the postdoc student, persuaded the researcher. What did he persuade him of? He persuaded the researcher to let him join the lab. Final one is remind, a very common mistake. You need to include an indirect object with this. So the authors remind, who do they remind? They remind the reader, they remind us, they remind their friend, whoever, but there must be an indirect object there. The authors remind us that there's ample evidence for their claim. So those are necessary indirect objects, but other ones give you the option. And that forks off between optional indirect objects. And if you include it, some of them require a preposition and others do not require a preposition. So let's look at the ones that do require a preposition. You don't need to use an indirect object with these verbs, but if you do use it, there must be a preposition there. So for example, most physicists agree that we do not understand dark energy. That's the reporting verb, agree. It doesn't require an indirect object. You, you know, the physicists can just agree among themselves. They can agree with the idea that we do not understand dark energy. However, if you want to include an indirect object, if you want to include the people with whom they agree, you need to use a preposition. You need to say most physicists agree with the claim 
that we do not understand dark energy. Or you could say most physicists agree with the people who say that we do not understand dark energy, that kind of thing. If you want to include the indirect object of the verb agree, then you need to include a preposition. But there are other reporting verbs that give you the option of using an indirect object. But if you use an indirect object, you don't need a preposition. So take a look at these verbs and then we'll look at some examples. So a good example of this is the verb show. Uh, you do not need an indirect object with this. The, the evidence can just show uh, the statement, a clause. You know, it can show that smoking causes heart disease. However, you can also include an indirect object if you want, and you don't need a preposition. You can say the evidence shows us that smoking causes heart disease. The evidence shows um, the readers that smoking causes heart disease. Anything you want. You don't need a preposition there. So let's test this out. Uh, we have the road map down below here so you can refer to that. Take a look at this sentence, find the error, and then see how would you fix it. Ah, 176 is missing, so let's go ahead to 177. It says deletion analysis implied researchers. Aha, uh -huh. so imply is our reporting verb here, and we have an indirect object. We have researchers. Uh, imply, it can take an indirect object. Doesn't have to, but it can. You have the option. But if you do use an indirect object with the verb imply, you need a preposition. So implied to researchers that HB was necessary. Here's another practice question. Uh, you have the roadmap down below. Take a look at the sentence and then see how would you fix it. The evidence convinced that. Okay, so convince is one of those verbs that must take an indirect object. You can't just go around convincing. You have to convince a person of something. So convinced could be anything. My friends, the students. You can convince anybody you want, but there must be an indirect object. Here's another one, and this verb, uh, deny, is not on the list. So uh, you might need to look it up in the learner's dictionary, where you might already know it, but take a look at this sentence, deny, and that there's an error in this sentence, and then see how would you fix it. Uh, Freud here, Sigmund Freud, he denied to repress his desire. Okay, so the verb deny, um, deny, it should be going with a finite noun clause. He should deny that he repressed his desire or something like that. You can deny a noun, but the meaning changes. Uh, um, if I make a request, the request can be uh, approved or denied. So if I ask, you know, if I can join a team, that request might be approved or denied. Um, Freud is not uh, denying the repression of, of his desire. He's denying uh, that he repressed his desire. If he, if he denied the repression of his desire, it means he doesn't want his desire to be repressed. It means, in other words, that he's letting his desire run free. That's not what Freud did. He repressed his desire. So we go with uh, denied that he repressed his desire. Here's another one, warn. Take a look at this sentence, find the error, and then see how would you fix it. A career advisor once warned to us, aha, so warned is our reporting verb here, and we have an indirect object, us. Warn is a reporting verb that can take an indirect object. You have the option, um, but it will not take a preposition. So the advisor warned us about giving handshakes, or he could just warn about giving handshakes. It doesn't require an indirect object, but if you do it, it does not take a preposition. Discuss. This is a very common source of mistakes. So take a look at this sentence, find the error, and then see how would you fix it. Common mistake here with the reporting verb discuss. Discuss is one of those reporting verbs that does not take a finite noun clause. Try to remember that. It's a very common mistake. Um, you do not discuss that, you know, that a clause, you can discuss a topic, an idea. So we have here the, the, the clause that we need to repackage into a noun, into the topic that is being discussed in the paper. Uh, that, that idea is uh, Malaysia was, in fact, was affected by the 1997 Asian financial crisis. So the most important thing here is about effect. That's the key verb in the sentence. So the noun form of the verb effect, you probably know, 
is effect with an E. So this paper discusses the effect of what on what of the 1997 Asia financial crisis, the effect of that on Malaysia. The reporting verb here is agree. So take a look at this sentence, find the error, and then see how would you fix it. It will be interesting to see if their results agree with, uh -huh. so agree with, agree with, and then we have a clause here. There is a double rule. So we know right away that's wrong because um, we have a with here, and with is a preposition. Prepositions always attach to nouns, but there is a double rule is not a noun, that's a finite clause. So we know right away that's wrong. Um, now let's see, the verb agree, um, it can take an indirect object, but that would be um, like agree among people or agree among things. So here we're not talking about people, we're talking about their results. So inanimate, uh, they're, they're just things, but they can agree. You know, uh, their results can agree with my results, they're the same results. So we'll say to see if their results agree with uh, what? We can say with uh, our finding or our result, you know, our finding that and then we can take this finite clause and, uh, and you know, that there is a double roll of rainfall. They do not agree with the double roll of rainfall. It does not work. That means they're, um, you know, they're in conversation and they agree with them. That doesn't work. Their results agree with our results. Their results agree with our finding that there is a double roll of, uh, of rainfall. Last one, we have the common reporting verb support. It's one of the four uh, most common reporting verbs. So take a look at this sentence, find the error, and then see how would you fix it. The evidence seems to support that uh, this genus rapidly specialized. So support, it's one of those verbs that does not take a finite noun clause. So we need to take this information and put it into a noun. The results support noun, noun phrase. So what do we have here? The genus rapidly specialized. Um, so we don't want to say that the they support the rapid specialization of the genus because again, that's like, it, it, it's kind of encouraging the specialization and that's not what the report, the evidence does. The evidence is supporting the, the idea, the claim, the fact that. So we're gonna call that a, a noun complement, noun phrase complement. Don't worry about the grammar too much for now. We're gonna deal with it in another lecture. But just remember that support must go with a noun. And so if you're trying to use a, a clause in that complement position, what you want is a noun complement. Uh, the, the evidence seems to support uh, the fact, uh, the fact that, the claim that, the idea, whatever, the opinion that uh, this genus uh, rapidly specialized. In summary, the thing to understand, uh, well, reporting verbs, you know, you want to use them anytime you are describing internal processes. We use action verbs to describe, you know, events, things that are happening in the world. But with reporting verbs, we're talking about phenomena that happen inside of uh, feelings, thoughts, and speech of ourselves or other people. And these verbs are a little bit particular. You know, they, they take different complements depending on which verb you're using. Uh, so it's very important to refer to uh, the information we have here to make sure that you're using the verb in the right pattern because different reporting verbs take different complements. And the other thing to understand about reporting verbs is that some of them um, you know, use an indirect object, other ones give you the option of using an indirect object, some do not allow an indirect object. So it's really important to understand the patterns that all these different reporting verbs follow. All the reporting verbs we've used in this uh, lecture are the most common reporting verbs in academic English. So you can refer to them, make a list, um, try to use them as much as possible and you'll start to get used to them. The most common complement of a reporting verb is going to be the finite noun clause. But again, not all reporting verbs can allow a finite noun clause and you know you have different options. So try to keep those three principles in mind when you're choosing the reporting verb because your choice of reporting verb contains a lot of information about what you think about that idea and the information that you can include in the clause.